What are you an expert at? If you have a podcast, chances are your show features your area of expertise. But how much do you really know about podcast production? My clients often thank me for making their shows sound great, but in my opinion, the main benefit I provide for all of my production clients is time. Time to do what they are experts at, time to grow their businesses, time to focus, and not stress out trying to do the technical production work that isn't their area of expertise. If you have a podcast or want to start one and you're ready to save three hours or more each week to focus on the stuff you're an expert at, I'd love to do all of your editing, mixing, mastering, and show distribution for you so that you can focus on growing your community and business. You can find out more at emeraldcitypro.com slash services. Hello, everybody, and welcome. I'm your host, Danny Osmond. If you love podcasts, if you are passionate about your business, if you want to create and grow a podcast that will connect you with your ideal customers, and you want access to education, to resources, and to other amazing business leaders and podcasters who can help you do it better every single day, then this is the podcast for you. I mentioned in last week's episode that we are going through a move right now. We are relocating from Franklin, Tennessee to Orlando, Florida. And part of the reason for moving to Orlando, Florida is to reduce my stress level even more. Even though right now, because we're going through the move, stress is a little bit higher than it normally is. But I wanted to take some time on this podcast to talk a little bit about stress because if you're an entrepreneur, if you are a content creator who is listening to this and is interested in learning how to podcast or how to podcast more effectively, how to reach people, how to communicate, how to improve lives, whatever, through a podcast, one thing you may experience at some point is the stress, the stress of deadlines, the stress of making sure you get an episode out each week. The stress of coming up with a topic to talk about on the next episode, etc. So let's talk about eight ways that you can lower your stress. Stress is one of the leading causes of stroke and hypertension in our society. But stress isn't always a dirty word. You know, we need certain amounts of stress in our lives in order to function well. And it's not just physical improvement, but mental improvement. You need stress as well. For instance, a desire to excel in our business, um, the drive to please customers, the practice of goal setting and goal completion, they all impose a level of stress on us that is good and productive. However, too much stress or the wrong kind of stress can, one, kill creativity, two, cause irritability and harm relationships, three, squash fun, and our enjoyment of life, and four, damage our physical, emotional, and spiritual health. Stress can either come from outside of us or be self-imposed. Either way, we can take steps to greatly reduce and or manage our stress levels, and here are eight effective ways to lower stress. The first way, set reasonable goals for yourself. Here's where you really have to know yourself, or If you're in a long-term relationship or married or something like that, your spouse, your significant other can provide you with great feedback. We need a certain level of stress in order to stretch and grow, but too much stress places unreasonable demands on us that render us less than effective. Think of this in terms of a sport like surfing. The surfer wants waves that are big enough to give them a thrill and increase their skill. Waves that are too small are boring, but waves that are too big for the surfer's skill and comfort level are dangerous and frightening, even life-threatening. Find your stress sweet spot in goal setting and ride that wave. Now here's the second way, exercise regularly. When I was early on in my entrepreneurial journey, I was not exercising. I did not run, I sat a lot, You know, I immediately gained 30 some pounds from sitting behind a a desk, mixing music and editing things like that. 
And along with that came a lot of stress and a lot of things that piled up. And it wasn't until I started exercising that I was able to manage that stress more effectively. When we're under stress, regardless of the cause, our bodies secrete stress chemicals like adrenaline and cortisol. These are both important chemicals in a fight or flight emergency. But many stressful situations don't allow for fighting or fleeing. Over time, these stress chemicals actually can damage our health. The best way to flush the body from these stress chemicals is to exercise. Often I've experienced and heard others say when exercising, I can feel the stress melting away. You don't have to have a six pack to get the benefits of exercise. Just get out and be active regularly. Now here's the third way to reduce stress. Eat less and fast intermittently. Eating too much food and too often makes us lethargic and can cause all kinds of metabolic issues and diseases. These add to and even cause stress. Intermittent fasting is a great way to discipline yourself to cut back on the amount of food you eat. You can fast intermittently in a variety of ways. First, you could fast for 24 hours once a week. You could not eat between 7 p.m. and 7 a.m. You can fast for a whole day once a month. But remember, when you fast, always stay hydrated by drinking plenty of water. Now, here's the fourth way to reduce stress. Laugh a lot. Laughing really is good medicine. Laughing gives us a more measured perspective of reality. When we laugh, we usually do so in the context of healthy relationships. Laughing prevents us from taking ourselves too seriously. Go out there and find a podcast that makes you laugh. Find a comedian that you like. Get on YouTube and watch some hilarious cat videos if that will do it for you. Just find a way to laugh to release some of that stress as well. Now, here's the fifth way to reduce stress. Cultivate healthy relationships. Nothing is more stressful than relational conflict. Don't hold grudges. Forgive others their faults. Do all you can to invest in healthy relationships by loving and spending time with others. Number six, slow down. Do you find yourself gripping the steering wheel tightly and bearing down on that slow driver in front of you? Slow down. Take it easy. Don't be in such a hurry. When we hurry, we make mistakes. And that too adds to our stress levels. Relax and enjoy the view. Now, the seventh way to reduce stress, avoid debt. Debt is a hard taskmaster. When we bought that new car on credit or made that purchase on our Visa card, we thought we could handle the payments, no problem. But situations change, and that new car or purchase may now feel like a prison sentence. Take steps to get out of debt if you're in debt. And if you're out of debt, cling to the freedom it offers. And finally, the eighth way to lower your stress. Take time to relax, meditate, and get plenty of sleep. Your body and mind need downtime. Do something enriching and enjoyable. Read a book, pursue a hobby, watch a good movie, play games with friends, go for a walk with a loved one. Now, find a guided meditation app that you like and work daily on calming your mind and being mindful. And then finally, while you're at it, be sure to get a good night's sleep. Now, for you, if that means six hours, great. If it means 10 hours, great. Do what you need to do to get a good night's rest. Too much of the wrong kind of stress can steal our joy and our health. Put one or more of these stress reduction strategies into place today and experience some relief. Then manage your stress as a way of life. So there you have it. If you're ready to make a real change in your business in 2019, start today by first of all, subscribing to this show on Apple or Stitcher or Android or Google Podcasts or whatever. Number two, please leave me a review. It's really helpful in getting the word out to other people. Apple likes it when people rate and review shows and it puts it up in search results and things like that. And number three, share it with a friend, a colleague, a coworker who you think would enjoy my episodes. So that's it. I look forward to seeing you next week in the next episode.